All right, we're officially recording. Thank you guys and welcome to Design 105. This is week three. One more week to go and, well actually two more weeks, but one more lecture week and you guys are out of this mod. So hopefully you guys feel, tell me how you feel. How, how did week two go? A lot of you took advantage of the opportunity to resubmit week one's work, so that was good. I'm very proud of you guys for doing that. Not a lot of people, week two was a little rough, I noticed. Some people struggled. We're still struggling with the same things, I've noticed, same, same concepts. So, so today, what I'm gonna do is open this lecture up. I'm not gonna spend a whole lot of time talking to you guys about things. I, I, I can if you want me to, but I really want to make this beneficial to you. And if you learn better by asking questions and having them answered, then let's just do that. We can make it an open forum. You ask questions about your assignments and I can explain them. Um, the first thing that I noticed that a lot of people, and if you did this, you were not alone, I'd say a good three quarters of the class still don't know how to package a file for print. So what does that tell me? Either they're not watching the live lectures or the recordings, or they uh, don't watch them completely. So I've gone over this week two, um, so you really need to make sure you watch week two's lecture because packaging files for print, if you've noticed, I've been increasing the points um, that get deducted if you don't do it correctly, but I'm also increasing the points that you do get if you do it correctly. So this is important. So big flashing lights on my screen, pretend it's here. I put this in red so you guys can see it. Um, this is how we're going to, we're going to learn how to package files. I'm going to go over demo real quick and we'll start class off here because this is important for your final project. If you don't package it correctly, I can't do anything. I, there is no deadline extensions. There is no, well, a partial credit for this. This is either you do it or you don't. So I really want you to get um, the hang of this. Hey, Pablo, thanks for coming. We're just gonna go over a quick recap on how to package files for print. So, okay, so yes, Simon, to answer your question, so Simon just said that, he found out that the PC version of the Adobe Suite Creative Cloud does make the PDF right inside of the package. So that's, that's what's cool. But it doesn't put the printer marks, and that's okay too. You can, you can add that if you want. Um, it's not, fully necessary unless it's specified on your assignment. So what's neat about packaging is it already does the PDF for you. It converts it all into one seamless, uh, quick conversion. And then all you have to do is compress it when you upload. So your PDF, your InDesign file, all the elements that are in your file, packaged fonts, packaged uh, images, all that goes into one folder. So there should only be one file upload when you um, upload or submit your, your assignment. And if you want to add the print marks, you can add another PDF or replace that one. That's totally fine, too. Okay, so before I dive in, do you have questions? What are your questions from week two, week three? Any questions that you want to ask me? Now's your chance. We do have two hours, but I want to spend this wisely. So anyone have questions regarding the assignments? Okay, so I don't see a whole lot of people <laughs> writing anything down. Um, okay, before I just said this in the beginning, please check your email, download those fonts. We're gonna be using those in our demo. Okay, so let's talk about packaging files for print. This, I did some screenshots so that you can see exactly how to do it. So to package a file for print, and I want you guys to do this with me. Everyone open up a new InDesign document. I don't care what size it is. I don't care if it's an old file that you used to design or a, uh, an assignment you're working on. Open up an InDesign file, save it, and I want you to follow these steps. And I want everyone to screen share and show me their packaged file for print. That's what, this is the first exercise we're going over today, okay? That's a good question, Pablo. When you package, you'll have to package every time you make an update. So you'll delete that folder and create a new one. 
or I guess not the folder, but the, um, you'll, you'll just create another save over it. Yeah, I, I don't recommend deleting the folder because your InDesign file is in that folder, so you don't want to delete the file itself. So, so I probably wouldn't recommend that, Simon. I would recommend just opening up your InDesign file if you add some pages or make some changes, resave it, and then save over it. Um, it depends on where you're working from. So if you're, if, well, if the student is working on, that's true, if it's outside of the file, but I don't want to confuse people and have them deleting. <laughs> people who actually are techie kind of get, get that. Even people who can kind of navigate um, on a computer can kind of get that because you're right. You sometimes you're working on the outside one, but if they're double, if they're working on the fold on the file inside the folder, I don't want them to think they can just delete the folder and then just it would probably cause more problems. But I see what you're saying. You make sense. I get that. Um, we probably want to double check and make sure which InDesign folder. But some students don't even know where they save things, so it's important to to kind of just play it safe. So I'll probably just say, to answer your question, Pablo, we just open your InDesign file and save over it, or give it a different name, and then package it again. So every time you make a change, you need to package it. Package it just means it's, think of a Christmas gift, okay? You just bought this awesome sweater, and you're going to wrap it up, okay? It's time to give it to some. It's time to pass it on. So you wrap up the sweater, which is the packaging process, and you give it away. So if you're going to change out the sweater for a t-shirt, you're gonna to need to repackage it all over again. Hopefully that makes more sense. Okay, so everyone follow these steps. Get to your, does everyone have a file open? Thumbs up, smiley face. Cool, okay, uh, Kat asked, well what if we're doing it right? Kat, you and I will go over how to do that. Um, there's a few steps, so we're gonna practice this, okay? So I want you to get a file open. Do you have a file open? It can be an old assignment. It can be a new work. It doesn't even have to have anything on it. Okay, cool. All right, so everyone's ready to go. So follow these directions. To get started, go to File at the top of your drop-down menu. So I've just done a screenshot here. File, drop-down menu, click Package. Okay. Or if you're, I put the keyboard shortcut. If you if you love the keyboard shortcuts, it's just Alt Shift plus Control plus F. <laughs> but it's easier to just go to File Package. What this does is it brings up a dialog box. So if everyone, yes, Cat. Did you have a question? Uh, it's okay if they're linked. What do you mean? What do you mean linked? Do you want to share your screen? I'll stop share. We can see what you're what you're seeing. Okay, in the meantime, everyone, kind of, you can stop there, or if you know how to package, go ahead and complete it. Whoops. You're the one that used to your screen. There you go. Okay, go to your InDesign file, Cat. Okay, so go to File. There you go. File. And show me how you package it. Package. Okay, you hit continue. It says this already exists, so you either replace it or save it as something else. Yep, you can either hit replace or you can save it as something else. Oh, I see what you're saying. Okay, hit package again. Okay, this is saying that you already have, you've already saved, you've already packaged this or have a file with the same name, so you have to give it a different name. So give it a different name, hit okay, give it a different name. Or add something, 
could be assessment underscore two. Something you'll remember it by. Do test. This is a test. Because if you put, yeah, test. There you go. That way you know that you can get rid of this one. Okay, hit package. Was that the, yep, you hit okay. Okay, so what this says, if you get this, this is actually good to, to know. If you, if you see this message, this document contains links to files that are missing or modified. Wait, <laughs> jump the gun. Okay, so what it's saying is that you have, you have pictures that it can't find. And the first one, do you see that red check mark on that cowboy hat on your guitar? See that check mark? That means that it can't find that picture. It's showing a, a, a screenshot, like a kind of a thumbnail, it's a placeholder, but it's saying it has no idea where that picture is. So either you've downloaded it or you've or downloaded it and then deleted it, or you've moved it to a different folder. So it, it cannot find that picture. So you'll probably want to do a search. Wait, um, close out for a minute. You, you can search for it in just a minute. Can you close out? So what so if you click go back to InDesign. Go to Window, your drop-down menu. So if you see that error message or you see that red check mark there, oh, uh, go, yeah, Window, go to your Links, all the way down, Links. So what this does, do you see those red check marks? So if you click on your Links tab, you'll see the, all the pictures. It takes inventory. InDesign takes inventory of every image, every object that's placed inside if you've done a place. Um, if you've placed anything inside InDesign, it takes inventory of it. So if you see a red check mark, that means it can't find it. It doesn't know where it's pulling from. You've placed it, but it's either not existed, non existent where it's found. So if you put it, if you downloaded it and pulled it from your download folder and then later you deleted it, or maybe you moved it to your your InDesign folder or your class folder, then if you've relocated it or deleted it, it will show a check a red check mark, meaning it doesn't exist wherever you pulled it from. So you need to double click on it. So double click on one of the red check marks. Okay, and hover over it. Hover over it for a moment. It will tell you where it's where it was pulled from. So it's saying it's it, it's pulling it from your downloads folder. And so you so you might want to double click it. Uh, go to actually click on your click on the red check mark. Double click. There you go. So here's where you do a search. Go find it in your downloads folder or go look for it in your, you can search for it by the name um, if you don't know where to pull it from. But it, once you find it, then hit open and it will replace it for you. So go find it. Open that country grades folder maybe. That country grades folder. Uh, do you see the JPEG anywhere? Which one can it find? Can you move the dialog box over? We want to look for the name of the file. So it's looking for country underscore CVR. So what you need to do is go in your search bar and type in that exact name, whatever it's named. There it is. So double click on it. You see it down there? Double click on it or hit open. There you go. And it automatically will, will relink it. And if it finds other objects within that folder, it will relink it as well. So hit OK. So it says you relink to, I don't see any more red check marks, and now you can package your file. If you, um, you always want to check your links tab to make sure there's no exclamation marks. Exclamation marks, if you see the yellow exclamation mark, kind of like a road sign. What that means is that you've made changes to the photo since you've placed it. So maybe you've um, taken it in Photoshop and you've adjusted some settings on it, or I don't know. If you've made any kind of changes to it outside of InDesign, it will have this yellow exclamation mark, okay? If you see the red, if the red question mark is very important because it means it doesn't exist and it can't find it, so it won't put it into your package folder. Um, so you need to pay attention to that as well. So you might hit package and go through all the settings, and if you get that error message saying it can't find your modified or missing links, then, and you go ahead and hit package and hit OK, kind of like what Kat did just that um, just a minute ago, then it, you think, oh, I packaged everything, everything's in there, 
but because it can't find it, none of those pictures will be in that folder, which is defeats the purpose. So you'll have an incomplete package folder. Are there questions about that? Does that make sense, Kat, everyone? Okay, cool. All right, go ahead and uh, end the, sh the screen share and we'll go back to the slides. We're gonna practice this. So if you just did it, Kat, go ahead and um, do the steps again, I suppose. And we'll go back here. Okay, so everybody package a file. So go to file, drop down menu, package. This brings up a dialog box and it's gonna give you all the information that you need to know, just kind of what we did with, with cats. We just kind of stepped you through it. You can either go through the other sections and look here. Before you hit okay, you want to make sure that the links and images, if it says uh, if it says two links found or one modified, or especially the missing, if you see those, you really need to go back to your links tab and make sure there's no yellow warning or red question marks uh, that are showing up on your links tab. And then if everything looks okay, you hit okay. And then once you've reviewed this information, just click package. This will take you to the printing instructions window that looks like this, like we saw on Kat's window. So after you click continue, this package publication window is gonna pop up. And here's where you can enter information. It's not necessary at this point, but just in case you're wondering what this is, just hit okay. And then give it a name. If you've already done this a million times, saved it or tried to package it, it's obviously going to say, oh, do you want to replace it? Or it, there's already one that exists in this, uh, by this name. So either rename it or save over it. Yes, Kat. When you were downloading pictures, they were doubling. Um, doubling in your folder, probably maybe you clicked on it more than once or maybe double clicked on something. That probably would be my guess. At least they're there. You can just delete the extras. Just delete the extras if you, if you don't need two of the same picture. Yeah, that's not a big deal. If too much is better than none at all. So I would just say just get rid of what you don't need. Any excess photos. Oh, that was the trouble. Now I can't find your, your images. You need to be careful where, whatever you're, um, wherever you're placing them. Whatever folder you pull your photo from to place in InDesign, you need to be careful not to delete that photo. If they're named the same, they will never have the same name. Even if they say country, one will actually say country one or country two. Um, they will always have a different name. So just make sure you're deleting the right file. That's probably what's causing you troubles. You thought you were deleting one file and you placed the other if they had, if you had double. So either I would just start over from scratch, put, replace everything, or just go check the links and hover over it, see the name of the file, and just don't delete that one. Does that help? Yeah, the thing with InDesign is we can't rush through any of these assignments. Sometimes rushing can cause confusion. We, it's, it's, InDesign is a little fickle. But I like how specific it is because it makes sure that it's pulling the right fi file, the right photo. If you do have two of something, how's it supposed to know which one to pull? Well, the one that you told it to pull. So you need to make sure you remember what, what file you're using if you're, um, and, and probably just, it just you just need to have an eye for detail. If it's giving you an error message, it's because it can't find something that's confused. So um, you just need to tell it where to go and find the photo. So. Give it a name or rename them so that you don't get them confused. That might, that might help. Okay, so Pablo has a question. Uh, you have images use RGB. Um, okay, that's something that you can correct in Photoshop. It's not necessary for this assignment or for, for this class. You don't need to worry about RGB versus CMYK. Um, if you want to know how to correct it, you just pull it into Photoshop, and then um, there's a setting that you can change it that way. All your images should be RGB. I don't think they were they were converted to CMYK. So I, I wouldn't worry about that. You can go ahead and package it with that with that warning sign. But that's good that you're checking that. Good job, Pablo.
Yeah, if you're sending to the printer, then you would want to know. Um, for this class, though, I can, I can show you after class if you want. Um, just want to make sure we uh, reserve the time in class for current assignment, like things that we'd have to um, go over. It, if you, do you have Photoshop? Okay, yeah, well, just remind me at the end of class and we can, I can show you exactly how to do that. For this class, it's not necessary, but yes, you would absolutely, if you were sending to the printer, you would want to print in CMYK. And if your photos are showing RGB, then you'd have to pull them into Photoshop and change the setting. You kind of have to, I guess, reconvert them. But it, that one, and it's not a lengthy process at all. But yeah, I'd be happy to show you after class for sure. But it's good that you brought that up because if anyone else is getting that error message, I wouldn't sweat that. That's not important right now. I just want to make sure, I think we just need to take baby steps. I just need to know that you know how to package a file for print right now. If you're getting any warning signs about color libraries, we don't have to worry about that. Oh, oh, going too fast here. Okay, so packaging files for print. So you've saved it, last step. Doesn't get much easier than that. You just uh, find it on your computer. You have, that's the thing is you have to remember where to find it. And when you open the folder, so this one is called pre-flight sample folder right here on this example. When you open the folder to know that it worked, you need to click on the fonts folder. You'll see a fonts folder. You'll see a links folder. You'll see your instructions text. That's not important, but it will be there. You will see a PDF. Um, there's not one on this example. And your InDesign file will all be in this one little folder. Then you compress this folder, okay? So that's what you zip. Um, you don't need to zip the PDF. You don't need to zip the InDesign file. You just need to zip this one folder with everything in it. Um, and you want to check the links folder to make sure all of your images made it into that folder. Because like with Kat's example, she had red question marks, so they were missing photos. So even though she might have pack clicked package and thought that it was, it was uh, packaged properly, if she, doesn't go, if she opened this links folder, she'd find that she was missing half of her images. So it's really important to keep inventory of what you have and make sure it's all there. Are there any questions about how to package a file for print? We've gone over this last week. I'm going over it again this week, so we should all be pro professional packagers by the time we submit our file on Saturday. No? Okay. Kat, if you still have questions, I promised you we could talk after class, so we can go over things more specifically if you want. All right. Okay, so who would like to show me their package file for print? Okay, Pablo, why don't you share your screen and we'll try it again. Pull up a file that you've already packaged. And we can practice that. Because that's a good question. So Pablo's concerned with repackaging. So, so say you're working on um, an assignment that you've already packaged and now you've made changes to it. Now it's no longer current. We need to repackage it. So I'll show you how to do that. I'll step Pablo through it. Okay, just let me know when you have a file up. In the meantime, we will move on. Um, actually, let me show you. Okay, so let's talk about your assignment three. Has anybody, anyone had a chance to look at assignment three yet? I had a lot of questions about why do I have to create a four page document? Of why this makes no sense. Um, it's because pack, uh, assignment three was the second half. So assignment two was part, part one, assignment three is part two. So this week you will, you'll have those additional two pages in your week two newsletter. You'll create your final, newsletter, so it should have four pages total. So week two, you went over and designed the, the cover and one of the inside pages with your ads. Now this, now this week, you're gonna be creating page three and four. All right, so you wanna use the images and text that they give you in this file. You wanna download these zip folders, okay? And then just follow the submission specifications. Remember, a packaged InDesign file, that is 
uh, going to be part of your grade, okay? And let's see. So what this does is you're going to be practicing paragraph styles. You're going to be required to use master pages. You're going to be able to use a baseline grid functionally. And you're going to be graded on how closely your final product looks like the newsletter example. Um, that's, that's the key. And I was really impressed. I thought, I thought you guys did a very good job on the newsletter project. I thought that one was a lot smoother than, than the CD one for some reason. But um, So good job. Good job on that. Are there any questions about assignment three? What is going to be required of you? No questions? Okay, let's move on. I know we're only in week three, but I think it's important to look ahead a little bit so there's no surprises. So we're gonna move on to week four. I just wanna show you what you're gonna be doing because today we're gonna to be doing a demo for our final project as well so that you, if those of you who wanna get started on it early um, can. Is the bleed all the way around the image? Yes, it is, Pablo, and I'll show you. Um, how to add a bleed to your to your image. It's all in the way that you set up your document. So let me pull up my InDesign file real quick. Um, I'll, I'll answer that. I'll come to you, Pablo, in just a minute. I'll show you. I just while I'm on this this screen before I switch over, I want to show you week four, week four's work. Okay. So assessment four. You're going to create a menu. Have any of you created a menu before? Or anything close to it <laughs> okay so this is going to be a bit detailed um, you're going to need to reserve a lot of time to do this why because they are not providing an example to copy in fact you are required to design a menu all by yourself um, you're going to um, you're going to be graded on the visual look and feel of your cover design and as well as the interior pages you're also going to be graded on creativity and whether or not you had a concept and carried it throughout the document so I really want you to um, visit the Student Success Center. I really want you to consult the, <laughs> the lectures, um, but get started on it soon. Give yourself more than a week to do this because if, if you're not comfortable with kind of designing on your own without having something to rely on or to look at, then you're gonna get design response. You might get stuck a little bit. So um, best thing I could suggest is maybe lay it out on a piece of paper or maybe go find a menu that uh, kind of a layout and design that you like that you might want to copy. Um, not exactly, it has to be original, um, but you can, I would definitely suggest maybe doing some research now. So Simon's got some experience with making menus. Um, okay, so Pablo, good question. So Pablo's asking, okay, what about photos? What about drawings? Yes, nothing is provided to you. Uh, well, there's design assets. So I guess you have a zip folder you can work from. You are given a logo that you need to use for the menu. And that logo is right, it's in this file. So I think it's in the zip file. Let me pull this up. Uh, let's do desktop. It's right here. Okay, so it looks like you're given a menu document. So you've got all the text provided to you, so that's good. You are given pictures that, to, that they require you to use. Okay, so you've already been given these photos. Um, and then the logo is right here. Gino's logo. So here's the thing. You can't change the colors of the logo in any way you need to create a document that works around what they've given you. Uh, it's an Illustrator file. There's, there's two. Um, this, yeah, you can choose which one you want to go with. Um, it's an Illustrator file, but you should be able to place it in InDesign just fine. So just place it in your InDesign file as you would. Grab a box, go to File place and then find it and place it just as you would a picture okay 
So I wanted you to look at that just so that you were aware. You can start thinking about it now. Okay, so we're back here um, really quick. Looks like we're, we've still got some time. So I wanted to go here through, how are the daily checkpoints treating you? Are you guys able to do, do well? Those of you who come to class, do get to see these daily checkpoints. I, I try to help guide you guys. We doing pretty good on them? So I'm not sure if you've done uh, Mondays yet, but I was gonna go through uh, some of these with you guys and we can all try to answer the questions together. So here's today's. Uh, do any of you know what the answer is? Why am I still considered a dependent student? If I live on my own, I'm considered an independent student. False, is that the answer? I haven't gone through these, so I haven't read it. Let's say false is the right answer. Good job. Okay, let's try the next one. I'm gonna kind of breeze through these real fast because I wanna spend the rest of the time designing. Let's try this next one here. More reading, um, what form determines a student's eligibility for a federal aid program? I would think it's FAFSA, but we'll see. Yep, FAFSA, good job, Sonia. Let's try Wednesdays. So there's a video, have any of you watched Wednesday's video? Big Spaceship calls their workflow a framework rather than a process. Um, what do we think, true or false? I know we haven't watched it, so. Any guesses? I'll say true. Look at that, true. Okay, good guess, Sonia. Let's try another one. Another YouTube video. Um, this one's about frames, so you might want to check this out. A frame with a picture in it will have a colored fill. Is that true? And why is it false, Sonia? Do you know? Does anyone know? Can anyone help Sonia out? Why is it false? It only has a fill unless you tell it to have a fill. It should default to a transparent color. That's right, false, good job. And which one are we on? Um, Thursday, okay, let's do one more. We'll do one more, then you're on your own for Saturday and Sunday. Okay, watching this video, you can change the color of the stroke by making the stroke red or the color of the background, foreground, or make it appear. So they're talking about the stroke box. Thanks, Kat. We'll see you in a few minutes. Um, so you can change the color of the stroke by doing what? What do you have to do to the stroke box? It's on your toolbar. So does it have to be in the foreground, the background, or do you have to make it appear? We know it's not red. Foreground, that's correct. Good job, Sonia, the brave one, <laughs> putting it out there. And that's right, it has to be on the foreground before you can make sure it's, um, and I'll show you why. Okay, we're, we're good here with the daily checkpoints. I think that's plenty. Um, let me, let's move on. Let's go to our InDesign. I'll show you why. So if you, here's your stroke on your toolbar. Does everyone see their toolbar? Move this over. So right here, you'll see these two squares with the red slash through it. The square with the white and the red slash means your fill. So if you hover your mouse over it, it's your fill box. The actual stroke box is behind it. It's kind of defaulted that way. So the stroke is in the background, the fill is in the foreground, but if I wanna make changes to my stroke, I need to double click it so that it's now in the foreground. I guess you don't even have to double click it. One click should suffice. So now it's in the foreground, it's, it's overlapping. You can see that. So to make changes, you need to make sure it's on the front. Then you can double click it 
give it a color and, and alter it that way. So that's why that is the foreground. Yep, or you can press X. So if you ever hover around a tool, it'll give you the keyboard shortcut in parentheses. So if you're a keyboard shortcut fanatic like I am, I'm, I'm always like uh, control, uh, Command C or Control C or whatever it is to quickly copy something or quickly paste something. Or if you just want to access the tool, you don't have to keep going over to your toolbar. Um, this is the easiest way. It's just hover over it and it will give you the, the keyboard shortcut parentheses. You memorize it, you're all the more faster. I just love not having to, to, I'm lazy. That's what it is. I really think it comes down to me just being lazy. I don't want to have to do more work than is necessary. So if I don't have to move my wrist or my mouse, I will not do that. Expedite, that's right, expedite the process. All right, so let's talk about our assignment. Let's get into newsletter designs. Um, if you could open up your newsletter for me, uh, Pablo had a question about bleed. Let me double check the uh, assignment to make sure that it didn't require a bleed. So what it tells us is we need, I don't see it asking us for a bleed. Was that just a, it does, it does, okay. Don't see it. Do you see it? Let me show you what I'm looking at. Okay. Uh, this week too, add traditional pages, use images, revise your week two work. This assignment will give you another way to practice. Master pages, paragraph styles, baseline grid functionality for the menu. Oh, for the menu, yes, you'll need a bleed. Okay. I see what you're saying. I am, I am now on the same page. Okay, here's InDesign. Okay. So for the menu, go to your file, set up a new document. So you go File, New Document. Um, eight and a half by 11 is what you need to do. You enter in, uh, you want, you can deselect facing pages if you'd like. Yep, all around the page. The bleed, if you don't see this bleed here, just click this, this arrow for more options. You should see your bleed and slug. So the bleed here is what you're telling the printer. So if you don't, so basically, a bleed is just that extra border of color or image that will, um, whenever your printer, when you send your file to the printer, they'll do a cropping on it or a cutting and to cut it to your size. And when they do that, sometimes you'll have, if you don't have a bleed, you either have this white border around your, your file, or it will be an uneven bleed of picture. So yeah, so 1.25 in this case. So the cool thing about InDesign is if you're a fraction person, you can enter the fraction, quarter inch, or I'm sorry, eighth of an inch. Eighth of an inch is 1.25 or the decimal. 0.125 and it will automatically uh, convert it for you, okay? So the bleed is where it's gonna be cut. It will show as extra on your page. So once I've done that, did you see once I entered in a value for the bleed, do you see this red line going around my document? This red line is framing my document. Uh, Kat, this is for the final project. We'll go over week three work in just a minute. So, so the bleed is, is where it's gonna be cut. Well, actually, the, it will be cut at this black line, but the bleed is to give it some extra, um, what's the word I wanna use? Basically some, some extra slack, so that when the printer cuts it, there won't be any uneven cut crop marks or any white border or just, it's kind of playing it safe that way. Yep, and then when you convert a PDF, it will say if you want printer marks, your printer marks will show exactly where your crop marks will be. So Simon's asking, does the bleed show the PDF where to, basically you're saying, does it show on the PDF where to cut the mark, or where to, where to crop it? And that's exactly what it does. So when you create a document, and then you, you file, save it, or export it as a PDF, you'll make sure you click on printer marks. 
Mm -hmm. It does. It tells you. And so when you, and I'll do it real quick for you. Let's, uh, let's place something in here. So if I'm doing a background, whoops, I canceled it. Let's do file new document. Eight and a half by 11. Do select facing pages. I'm setting this up for a four page menu. 0.125 inches. Don't forget to type inches on there uh, when you're entering in if you don't have inches as your preset because it will not convert it to inches. I want to make sure it does. Your bleed will be off. So if I'm doing a background color, let's say, okay, and I'm placing my file, this is my background color, I'm placing my document my background okay is this an even placement of a background color the bleed does not enlarge the image Pablo what it does is it extends the color so when you cut yourself what happens you bleed over right you it bleeds on to what it's doing is just it's giving you a safety net so when the printer takes the file you have some leeway you just have some extra extra slack, extra background color, so when they crop it, it will crop and have your background color extend all the way to the edge. Otherwise, you'd get this. You'd see like a little strip of white that would be uneven, or maybe, maybe your cropping would look like this. So you're just telling it, I want an even amount of color on all four sides, and you do need a bleed line when you're sending to the printer. So then I want to convert my, my PDF. So uh, here's, here's what I'll do. Go to File, Export. I'll name this Bleed Example. Okay, save. Then when you get to this point, the Export PDF. No, Kat, it doesn't, it's just an example. I'm just showing you, I'm just showing Paulo about the Bleed. You should always extend to the bleed line, Sonia. Even if you extended past the bleed line, it wouldn't matter because it will just crop it at the bleed line. So you don't have to be, um, but you definitely want it to go to the bleed line always. In fact, even when the assignment doesn't require it, I do, I do like to, I do encourage you to use it. Um, it just shows you, it's a guide showing you where you need to have everything lined up and touching. It's, a, it's just another guide, smart guide for you. Yep, and then when you export a PDF, you go to Marks and Bleeds, and you want to make sure that this is checkmarked, all printer marks. You want to see, and then you can decide, um, uh, you can specify if you just want your bleed marks to show, or if you want your crop marks to show. You can specify what information you want on your PDF. Okay? So the bleed is very important, Kat. It's very important. It's important because you, you, you're telling the printer where to, where to crop your, your file. So, for example, I know it's hard to understand because we haven't, um, you haven't worked with printers before, but when you get into an internship or even a career where you're working with printers heavily, they're going to require a bleed size. Now, I don't want to blow your minds, but the bleed size will also be factored into file sizes. You'll have that eighth of an inch or that quarter of an inch that um, is, is being factored into your file size. So you need to, I, I'm not a mathematician, but um, you kind of need to be able to do some addition or subtraction. So if a final size is, um, uh, let's see, eight and a half by 6.25, that means it's eight and a half but it has a 0.125, it has an eighth of an inch bleed on it. So you just have to kind of, I'm not gonna confuse you, we're not gonna get into that, but yes, bleeds are important because it tells the printer where to crop it. It keeps your border even. It allows your background color to be cropped evenly and doesn't allow for maybe a funky um, cropping or a white border, uneven strip around your, your frame. Does that make sense? close out of these these windows here so these are great questions any other questions
So just, just to clarify, guys, um, a bleed is, is a printing term that's used to describe a document. Um, it has images or elements that touch the edge of the page, like we see here. It's, it's touching the edge of the page that we want it to extend over, okay? We want it to, to basically extend beyond the trim edge, and we, we don't want to leave any white margin. When a document has to bleed, it really needs to be printed on a larger sheet of paper and then trimmed down so that there's no white margin, so it doesn't look like this on one side, or maybe an uneven white border like that. So it's a guideline, absolutely, but it's a guideline for you as a designer. It's also a guideline for the printer, most importantly. So it is for safety reasons, absolutely. Um, and you cannot do, you cannot design without one. Um, I don't know of any designer who works with a printer who doesn't use a bleed line. If you don't, you're you have very unhappy clients because your file will not turn out the way you think. Just because you have it lined up here without a bleed line and everything is A-OK -okay on your screen, when you send it to the printer, basically what the printer does is they need to print it bigger than it really, than, than the file size, and then they trim it down to make sure that they get everything in, in that framework that you've designed instead of starting at your size and then you can't start at your size and work up. So what it's doing is it's saying, make this file size just a little bit bigger and then cut it down so that you can make sure that the red bleeds over on all four sides evenly. So yes, it is a safety issue and you will need to get very familiar with it. All right, so we're going to go ahead and move on due to timing. Um, does everyone feel comfortable with this? Okay, so would you guys rather go over week four's, uh, starting week four's assignment? You want to get a head start on the final, or would you rather see a demo on the week three? I think we'll have time to do a little bit of both, but I wanted to see what everyone wanted to, to do today. Okay, we've got some votes for week three. Does anyone want to go over week three stuff first and then if we have time, we'll do week four? Okay, I, I'm excited to do week four because it's a menu design and I think it's a lot of fun. Um, I used to work for some restaurants where I got to design their menus and it was, it was a lot of fun. It's a really cool kind of creating the brand of, of, a, of a company, of a restaurant. Okay, so the newsletter design. So you'll need to pull up your original document. In this case, I don't have a, my original document, but what I will do is do four pages, make sure my pages, I'm gonna do a, a desktop uh, share real quick. One second, sorry, sorry for the block screen. Do a desktop share, I'm gonna minimize my PowerPoint. Get this here. Uh, the menu is for week four. It's your final project. The menu is week four. I don't want to confuse you. I'm just trying to get you guys to think ahead. What this week is is the is uh, what you're doing this week is the newsletter, right? And yes, we'll be doing the cover for the for the menu. That's right, Sonia. So we'll do the newsletter first. Let me grab the, I think I just deleted it. Let's see. This is the, go back to downloads here. Um, newsletter file, this is what I want. Okay. So that's the, that's the cover you did. So we need to do this page and this page. So 
So we're going to move this in. Okay, so let's do this page first. This will be page three, I think. It, it, oh, yeah, page three. So I'm going to place it over my document. In this case, we don't need to bleed on the newsletter. And I'm going to create my layer, get my layers. Where's my layers. All right, I'm going to make this example. And I'm going to lock the layer, but oh, unlock it. Hit OK. I'm going to minimize it so it's faintly there so I can see what else I'm doing. Now I'm going to lock it. I'm going to add two more layers. Layer two will be text. Layer three will be images. So is everyone ready to begin? Should we take our 10 minute break and then come back so you'll, you're able to get your files open? Would that be easier? We'll take a vote. Do we want to take our 10 minute break now or do we want to pull this up, try to get started and then take it in about 20 minutes? Okay, all right, well, let's take our break now. Um, let me put this here. Stop our share. Okay, we'll come back, get your file open, get it ready to go, get the files downloaded, your zip folder, uh, zip file down from assignment three and pull any images, get them in your InDesign, or your InDesign file, and we'll start uh, when we get back. All right, awesome.
Okay, are you guys ready? Are we back? Let's get started. Okay, so I saw a few comments. I'm gonna just backtrack real quick. So it looks like, Kat, you had a question about how to, how to do multiple pages. So you go to File, New. Kat, are you with me before I even start? We're doing our newsletter. You're doing your newsletter file, so open your newsletter. And then if you want to add pages to your already existing, pull up your pages dialog box. Yep, you add to it. Do you have four pages already? It, you were supposed to set up a four page document um, on week two, so if you didn't, you just go to your pages uh, dialog box. You can find that on your window drop down menu. Pages, make sure that's check marked, and it will pull up this box here. When you see this, if you want to add a page, just go to this doggy ear page here in the middle, this icon. It's right in the middle of the trash can or to the left of the trash can. And hit, every time you hit it, it will add a page. Now I have six pages. Now I have seven pages. Now I have eight pages, okay? If you want me to get rid of a page, just click on a page. Um, you can either drag it into the trash can here. Okay, and I only need four pages, so there's four. Okay, one, two, three, four. This is the newsletter, we're on the newsletter. That's right. That's what everyone voted for, right? We wanted to go over week three. This is newsletter. All right, so once you have your four pages, you are gonna be graded on your use of master pages and your use of um, paragraph styles, okay? And we went over that and how to do it in week two. I'll do a quick overview for you if you need, um, but for the most part, go back and watch week two because I go over it quite in depth. Simon has a question, when you open the zip file, page two is now page three and the new pages are two and four. Don't worry about the numbering on the, on the pages. Um, you'll create your own numbering system, okay? And I'm about to show you that. So that's a good segue, so thank you, Simon. That's a good segue into what we're gonna go over now. So it, it doesn't, to be honest, guys, it's not gonna matter the order. The only thing I care about is that your cover page is the first page, okay? Oh, the file said two and four on them, got it, okay. So it, it doesn't matter what the page numbers say. I don't care about the order as long as your cover is on the, is on the first page. Um, I know it, it doesn't matter. I, what I want to see is your use of master pages. Okay, I'm, I'm really looking at can you instead of just copying something, can you can you create a master page with elements on it that are applied to all the other inside pages? Can you create a paragraph styles, a different paragraph styles, and apply it to your document? And I saw a lot of people kind of miss that boat. They they didn't create paragraph styles and use them. And in a multi-page document, you're going to want to. It's a time saver. And we're all about saving time. Okay, so go to your, uh, yeah, there is. There's a footer. There's a footer you're gonna wanna include. So go to master page, get your text document, and you'll wanna draw it out, okay? You will want to place your text document somewhere below this pink margin line. I like kind of centering it so the pink margin line goes uh, across the middle here of your text box. And we're going to create a page number. Does everyone remember how to create a page number or insert a page number on your master page? So remember, we're up here. Don't confuse your master pages with the inside pages, okay? You can even pull this down so you don't even, you're not even tempted to see it. We make sure it's kind of grayed out, highlighted. This is the A master that we're on. 
So it looks like, yeah, the master page might be the same. Um, I'll, I'll have to open the examples to see if there's anything else that we can include. But yeah, for now, let's just do the footer. So if we double click, uh, make sure we're on the right page, go to type, scroll down to insert special character, uh, markers, current page number. Does everyone see that? Actually, let me do my desktop so you can see. There we go. So go to, so you wanna draw a text box like I did. Go to type, insert special character, symbols, uh, I'm sorry, markers, current page number. Do you see that? All right. And then I'm gonna tab over, oops, tell about here, let me go back. And I forget what was on that. Was it month, year, insert? Insert the correct month and year. So we need the month and year. So you, uh, what, current month, we're in November. Two thousand fifteen, and then I'm gonna just hit the space bar and move it over so that two thousand fifteen lines up perfectly with that, that purple margin line. Okay, now I'm gonna highlight my font. I'm gonna give it a um, a nice footer size. The footer should not be too big, so I'm gonna give it a size ten. I'm also gonna change the font to Helvetica or Arial is acceptable. And I want to do regular. And now I'd like to format it. So I think I'm gonna bold the page number. So it shows up. And I'm going to do a light on my 2015. Just like that. All right, so now I've done some formatting. I could even get a, give it a color if I wanted to. Um, might do gray, so the black doesn't stand out since my text will be black. I probably want it to be just an afterthought, so I don't need it to be too stark. Um, I'm gonna go over here to my black. Let me see. Where is my swatches? Go to window, color, swatches. And it will pull up your swatches panel. And I'm gonna give it a tint of about 50. I wouldn't go lighter than 50, or you might be hard to see it when you print it. But I'll just, I'll give it 50, okay? So now I'm gonna double click on my first page to see if it's there. And looks like it's there. I see that. I'm gonna go on page two. Oh, look, it's there too. What about page three? Oh, now it's page three and four. So by including a header once, or I'm sorry, a footer once on my master, it applied to all four pages. So can you see how that would be a time saver when you create one, you make one change to one page and it applies it to multiple? It's, it's and I know you probably can't, see, you know, well, I could just do that on four pages, but when you're working with hundreds of pages, you are gonna definitely need this, this uh, setting. So it's good to get in practice. So Sonia asks, why is uh, mine turning gray when I'm trying to type all of a sudden the whole box so I can't see the text? I'm not quite sure. Do you wanna share your screen? Let's take a look at yours. Okay, that looks great. And then what's turning gray? Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm glad I could fix it. Glad I could help. Uh, sometimes in designs just fickle like that, it will, it does weird things. Okay, so we've got our master page set up. And now what we need to do is set up our paragraph styles. Okay, do we, does anyone remember how to set up a paragraph style? This is gonna be part of your grade, so it's important that you listen. Pay attention. 
Does anyone want to tell me? I'm going to grab my type tool. I'm going to draw a box around this first column here. And I'm just going to I'm going to just fill it with some text, but use the text that's provided, if, if any at all. I'm going to format it. Uh, no, well, this one I'm going to do Times New Roman. Times New Roman regular. It, it, it doesn't matter. what If it's a good serif font that's legible, that's acceptable. Um, and then a good font size, I don't know, let's see what size they have this at, maybe 10, maybe a little bigger, let's see. 11 is what I think it is. Okay, so that's a good question. It's not gonna be the same words because all it is is filler text cat. So what it's doing is it's taking just random Latin words and it's putting it in, it's just filler text is all it is. It's just placeholder text. It's not real text. So when you place it in, it's gonna be at random. Does that make sense? Does that help answer your question? Nope, you don't ever lose points for that. As long as you have text, what you will lose points for is if it's not the right size. So like this, I, I placed text and when I adjusted my, my font size, it's overlapping onto my header, my airport Wi-Fi here at the bottom. So what I'm gonna do is just kind of delete the sentence. And now I can start a new header. Fill with placeholder text. And what it does is it fills to the size of the box that you have, okay? So now I can format my, my drop cap. So with this, uh, first, first things first, I wanna make sure that this is regular times new Roman. I've got it at about 11 point, that should be good. I'm going to highlight this, I'm going to go to my window, and let's see, type in tables, paragraph, oh, it's already up. Paragraph styles, right here. Why Latin instead of English? Well, English would be more specific, right? Who's to say what article would get placed in there? Latin is just placeholder text. Um, you would definitely place English words in your document if it was a real document. This is just pretend. So it's just for the assignment. So we're not focusing on the, it's not like an essay where we care about what it's saying. We just need to place the text and learn to format text. Does that help? Okay. Yeah, I, I wouldn't, it, I don't know why it's not English, but if it was English, it would actually make sense. And we're trying to, we're not really focusing on the words as much as we are the formatting. So does everyone have their paragraph styles dialog box pulled up? I'm about to create a paragraph style, which is what you're gonna be graded on, on this assignment. So if everyone can pull it up, and I don't mean to rush, I'm just trying to get as much in this session as possible. So once you have your paragraph set up, click new, and I'm gonna, I'm going to give it a name. So this is body text. This is for my body text for my paragraphs. All right. And then I'm going to create a new one. This is going to be my drop cap. Hit OK. And for my drop cap, I'm going to go up here. Oops, wrong one. Uh, where'd it go? Where'd it go? On here, paragraph. Here we go. Give it about a three, size three on the drop cap. And then so that's good. Now I'm going to create a new one. This one's gonna be for my header. This one needs to be 
It can be Ariel or Helvetica. I think this one looks like it's maybe Ariel. I guess we'll find out. Ariel, and then I'm going to go to type, change case, click on uppercase. That way I don't have to retype it all. And I'm going to make sure that's bolded. Let's see. It may not match up exactly. Don't worry about it. I just want to make sure you can format and create a paragraph style. It can be whatever you want it to be. Let's do Arial Bold, maybe. Arial Bold. And then I'm going to highlight this. Whoops. This is my subhead. Okay, so now I've created all these different paragraph styles. Yeah, as long as you use paragraph styles, Simon, you should be fine. I mean, this is part of your grade, so paragraph styles, the use of master pages, the two things that we're just going over. I mean, placement, you guys can, can get placement pretty well. Um, you guys are actually really good at that. I just need you to learn how to do this. So now that I've set up, I know it seems really long <laughs> now that we've been taking a long time to set up this one paragraph, but now it should go pretty fast. So now I'm going to draw another type box. And I'm going to let my smart guide snap into place. Do you see these green arrows here at the bottom? I made some comments to you guys earlier about making sure things line up. This green arrow here on my right on the column that I'm moving needs to line up with this left one and it will snap into place because I want my text to end at the same place. I too will fill this with placeholder text. Okay. And if it doesn't line up exactly, that's, that's okay. I just want the same idea. So I'll highlight my header, double click it. Um, all of this, actually I'm gonna highlight everything, click on body text. I'm just gonna format it so it all lines up. I'm gonna highlight this, click subheader. Oops. There we go. So yes, to answer your question, Simon, paragraph styles are important because I'm looking for uniformity. I noticed in some students that I was grading, the body text would be different sizes. It would be a different font family altogether. Sometimes it would be bold and, and regular. I mean, it was just kind of all over the map. So I'm looking for consistency. It doesn't have to line up perfectly with the page behind it, but it does need to have the same size headers. Paragraph styles keeps everything consistent. All your subheaders will have the same, will be the same font, same weight. All your body text will be the same font, same weight. So it adds uniformity and really makes it for a very clean, professional looking layout. Um, your other question, do you have to go back to and do pages one and two, or are you just grading three or four? No, I'm doing the entire document. So what you're gonna do, that's a good question, Simon, is you're gonna open your original one and two page, make sure you add three and four if you haven't already, and then design that all together. You're gonna to package the entire thing. There shouldn't be page just page three and four. I need to see one through four. Yeah, and if you haven't already included paragraph styles in one and two, I'd go back and do that. Which should be easy because you only create one paragraph, you know, one paragraph style for the body text and just go and click in the text box and, and, um, and include it. Okay, so we kind of, does, does everyone kind of get the idea here of how to set up a, a paragraph style? Anybody need me to go over it again? Now's the time.
Okay, good, good. Okay, so now that we have our paragraph styles lined up and we've used our master pages for the footer here, um, next is to place our picture. So I'm gonna go in here, I'm gonna grab, I think this is the picture. Place it in here. Make sure I make it the right size. Okay. Good, Simon, I'm glad. Um, that's important to do. And I wanted to also point out here, look at this. Do you see where my text box is? It is important to try to get everything to line up. You don't have to necessarily do that, but make sure things line up here at the bottom. See these two text boxes? These need to line up. Everything needs to be flush. Make sure that the sentences end. I said make sure your sentences end at the same place. Okay, so we want to make sure some of this might be off a little bit, but to ensure that they line up. So the boxes line up, but the font does not. Do you see that? If the font does not line up, maybe you can do some troubleshooting. So for example, you can move. You can, there's a few ways you can do it. You can either move the text box down a little bit and make sure the words line up. And move it up like that. That would probably be the best way to do it. Maybe add another sentence there. Okay. So again, it doesn't have to be perfect, but I do wanna see that you've you were, remain consistent, you used paragraph styles, etc. Are there any questions? What font uh, oh, size font am I using? Good question, Pablo. I am using size 11 times New Roman regular for the body text. So, and that's for the body. And then for the header, I'm using Arial, or I think it's Arial, yeah, Arial, and I'm doing a bold size, let's see, size 11 as well. All right, does anyone have any questions so far? Are we good to go on how to do this? Let's look at the other page real quick. Okay, so this one might be a little tricky. Okay, good question. What if the date and page number is covered? Is it okay to move it down or move columns up? That's a good question. And you, you might run into that. So for instance, if I'm drawing my yellow box and because my master automatically places my footer there and I give my yellow box an actual yellow color, it now covers up my footer. So, and if I don't want that, what I can do is I can change, the, I can override the, 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 the master by right clicking on the page. So on my first page, if I need to override the footer at all, um, never, okay, so here's, here's a good rule of thumb. Never change the master footer in this case. If you have something overlapping it, move that up, okay? 
or move it away. Move the object that's covering it away. You want to keep consistency. So never should you move the footer down two inches below where it is on page three. The footer stays consistent. You need to alter the, the, the layout to fit. Does that make sense? Yeah, and Simon, like Simon says, you'll be there's a there's an opportunity to make multiple multiple masters if you want. You can make a master for just the right pages, a mas master for just the left pages, depending on how you want to lay things out. In this case, you only need one master because we're only really putting one element on the page. Um, but yeah, so yeah, master is your template. Thanks, Simon. So in this case, you would never move, and I almost hate to show you how to do it, <laughs> but you can. You can right click. Um, override all master page items and by clicking that now you can edit any master items that are on that page but I would never never move a master item because if you do that then you throw consistency out the window you need to make your layout fit um, your template so in this case if the yellow box was overlapping my my footer and I couldn't see it um, then you definitely need to alter the object, not the footer, not the master setting. Okay. All right. Good questions. Those are very good questions. Okay. Now, um, does everyone know how to do bullets? I'm noticing there's some bullets in here. This might give some people some, some trouble. I'm gonna throw this text in here, or I'll just fill this with Latin text. Again, fill with placeholder text. Click on my body text, since I've already got it set up, I'm gonna just give some returns here. Let's practice bullets for just a minute. If you highlight your text and click on this icon, bulleted list here at the top, does everyone see that? Right here. Any return that you make will create a bulleted list. So I'm going to get rid of these returns because it's giving me an extra bullet. But now I have a bulleted list. Same goes for numbers. On the other page that you'll be required to design, you'll need to have numbers one, two, three, four. You'll just click on the, the numbered list below the bulleted list. Click one, two, three, four, okay? If you need to um, do anything else to it, you can mess with the settings, like how far do you want the four to be indented, or the numbers to be indented. Um, do you want the whole paragraph to go in? There's a lot of different ways that you can format this. So hopefully this helps. All right, anything else, any other questions? I'm going to go ahead and move on to the next assignment so that we can figure out how to lay it out. Okay, so let's move on. Let's go on to assignment four. Let's look real quick with the, or not assignment four, I'm sorry, assignment three. Sorry, Pablo, I'm talking about the menu design. You have two assignments this week. So we just went over the newsletter design. That was assignment three. Now assessment three is what we're going over. So assessment three gives you a logo to use. So make sure you download that. This is eight and a half by 11. And then just like we were going over with Pablo was the, the bleed. You will need to include a bleed. All right. So now that we know what we've got to do, let's see, now we've got to create a cover. So let me stop the share, go to All right, so we're going to shift gears. Is everyone ready to move on to the next assignment? This is where we're going to need to implement those fonts that we downloaded. All right. 
Hopefully you guys are able to do these last two pages pretty simply. Okay, let's do it. Let's dive in. Okay, everyone create a new document. Please pull up. Uh, sure, that's fine, uh, Sonia. That's a good question. It does ask you to uh, create a four page menu. So let's see, what does it ask? Go ahead and create four pages. And when you up, when you send or package it, it will automatically create a PDF. The other pages will be blank. But the only thing I, I think you're doing for this is the cover. So you're just doing the cover design. You don't have to do any interior pages. Um, I would do non-facing. It's personal preference, but non-facing allows you to focus on one page at a time. The only time that facing pages really helps you as a designer is if you were creating um, a double, what we call a double track or a double spread, a spread in a magazine where your images flow onto the other page or maybe your design flows into the other page. Um, if you're, but in a menu design, each page is kind of its own. So there's nothing that you need to flow onto the other page. So I would just say non-facing would probably be the best way to, maybe less confusing. But again, it is personal preference, so whatever you prefer to design in. Yep, that's right, Simon. So let's set up our document real quick. New document. Standard eight and a half by 11, 8.5 inches by 11 inches. Orientation is portrait. And then what we need to do, which is different, is create a bleed. 0.125 inches, that's eighth of an inch that you're adding. That's new. And then you wanna to go to number of pages up here, four. Deselect facing pages. And you should be all set. Hit okay. All right. I'm gonna clean everything up here real quick. see what we're doing. I'll leave the pages dialog box open. Okay, so we're ready to move on. Okay. All right, so let's do a cover page. Um, this, this tutorial is going to kind of carry over into week four, but first I want to start by talking about menus. They, they do play a huge part in reshaping a diner's experience, for the better or for worse. If you've ever walked into a restaurant and um, they just have the most amazing menu, some have pictures, some don't, but you, when there are pictures, they just look so appetizing. I tend to go buy the items that have pictures. Studies show people will buy items with pictures. Um, but then again, <laughs> the, there are restaurants where I've walked into and they've been complete dives and it does not look appetizing. You can tell the menu was not professionally designed. There's a lot of things that are unfortunate about the menu design itself and it can kind of turn um, diners away. So we really want to focus on good, clean design here. Now, whether you're creating a menu for a restaurant, a cafe, or a mom and pop shop, or just maybe looking for a way to wow friends and family with your designs at a dinner party, you can easily liven up the table with some simple uh, to create trendy um, menu layouts. And now you are supposed to be creating your own creative template instead of using one that's been given to you. But in this case, in this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to lay out a very simple, clean menu. And you can take it and do a spin off of it uh, if you want. So let's get started. So we've already included our menu size here. Now, um, there's a really a lot of cool features that we could do to this, a lot of ways to jazz it up. But the first step um, after you, it's, after you create your new document is to keep 
the number of pages to, um, to four. Make sure you don't include any more. And then um, we're, gonna in, we're gonna include the columns. So we're gonna set the number of columns to four and reduce our gutter a little bit. Now, the way that you do this is if you go to menu, um, your window, and just make sure that you've got your table. I'm sorry, not your table, let me see. Um, actually, I'm gonna back up a little bit. Okay, go to File, New. If you haven't done this already, I'm gonna just kind of back up. Um, this isn't imperative, but it is helpful. If you wanna alter your gutter, it kind of shows you where to lay things out. I think I might skip this though, because it might be a few unnecessary steps. So we're gonna go ahead and, and cancel this, as long as you have a standard page that looks like this. All right, so let's get our layers set up. So first thing, get your layers box. Um, layer one, okay? If you don't see it, go to window, layers. Double click on this default layer one to open your layers option. Yeah, I'm gonna scratch the gutter part. Um, I think for now, we just need to focus on the basics. So um, forget I said that. I, I don't wanna confuse anyone or add unnecessary uh, elements into the equation. So, um, so let's name this first layer border. Okay, click OK. Next, we're going to create a new one. Layer two is going to be color. Hit OK. Create a new one. This one is going to be type or text. Okay, and then once you have these layers set up, um, yeah, you could even, uh, well in this case, yes, we'll need to do images, let's do layer four. The tutorial I was gonna go over doesn't include images, but you would definitely need images. So go ahead and get that set up. I'm gonna give you guys about four minutes to get your layer set up, new document set up, and um, I'll, I'll start the clock in about four minutes and then we'll come back and hopefully everyone's caught up to this point.
Okay, so does everyone have their layers set up? Okay, so for this assignment, you need a four page document. You need four pages because this is going to be part of week four. So it's the same reason why we needed four pages for assignment week in week two. Does that make sense? We're, we're creating a four page menu document, Pablo. So I don't know if you were here at the beginning of class, but we were just going over assignment four. You're creating a four page menu document because in week four, you're gonna go, you're gonna design pages three, four, um, two, three, and four. For this week, we're only creating the cover, but we don't wanna create two separate files. So we're creating one file, and then you'll create the cover, and then next week you'll have two, three, and four. Okay? All right, so now we need to build a border on our menu. So we're gonna start working on the reverse side of the menu. Now this side, with the most text um, is the side that we're gonna want to have a border on. Um, let me see, actually maybe we should start with the cover since that's what we need to do. Let's get our rectangle tool. I'm going to use my bleed as my guideline. I don't want green, I'm actually gonna do, um, you don't wanna do a harsh color, you wanna do a nice, toned down color, probably. A little darker color so it's not so bright. I have a logo I'm working with, so I'll probably grab the red of that one. Let me see. So I'm just using the rectangle tool to create a uh, background. You can either do a white background or you can do a, a solid color background. Actually, probably first thing I need to do is see if that logo is going to look good. Grab this and place it. Oops. Hang on. I'm placing that Geno's logo. Here it is. There we go. So if I click and hold this box down, you'll notice this pink line goes vertical, this pink vertical line goes all the way down my page. What, that, what that's doing is telling me it's centered um, from the left to the right of the page. So is Gino's a real, a real pizza place? I just dragged it from, from Illustrator. You can also create a rectangle frame and go to file place. You can place the logo, in, even though it's an Illustrator file, just like you would a picture. It's a good question. You don't need to do anything special for the Illustrator file. file. You can just place it like you would a picture, or you can drag and drop. It's just easier for me to drag and drop because I don't even know where it's saved yet. <laughs> so it saves me time. All right. So now I'm gonna place my logo. Now, remaining on the same page, um, I'm going to take the rectangle tool again and drag to create a shape. Probably we're about the width of my margin, like this. And I want uh, no fill. So I'll, let's see, go to swatches, no fill. But I do want the stroke. So I'm going to bring the stroke into the foreground. I'm going to choose black. And then I'm going to go. I'm going to set the stroke weight to three up here. You see that? And now that I've uh, set that, I'm going to go to the type. And, and click on white diamond. There's a drop down right underneath the stroke weight. And I'm going to click on white diamond. So it should look like something like this. So this is my cover. So it's pretty basic, but I, again, it's a very clean layout. Are you guys at this point, or should I, should I wait a few minutes so you can catch up? 
Yes, Simon, that's right. So right now you're creating a four-page document, but for the assignment for the assessment week for week three, you only needed to create your your cover page. Now next week you're going to design two, three, and four. So the inside pages are going to be a little bit more convoluted, but for now you just need to create the cover. Yeah, I agree with you, Sonia. Not only does it save you time, but simple is better. I mean, you don't need a whole lot. Um, now, there's a lot of cool things you can do to a menu, and I'll leave that up to you. Let the creative juices flow. But for now, I just want to get the basics, basics in. So, for example, I'm going to probably be probably be placing this rectangle, um, this white diamond border around my inside pages too. So I'm going to copy it, go to my A master and paste it and a cool feature is if you ever cut or copy something if you right click paste in place it will put it directly on the page as it was found before you cut it or copied it so it places it evenly so that's going to be on my master so now if i click on page two it's there i click on page three it's there and it's also on page one Uh, that's a good question, Simon. You can do whatever your little heart desires. I, I would just say um, maybe that would be if there's room for it on the back of the page. It's not exactly a business card, so I'd probably say I, I wouldn't worry about it. Or maybe you could put it here, yeah, on the cover. You could probably put it right down here, really in small print. Remember, it's not the star of the show, so just really small down here if you wanted to. Yeah, you're right. Usually, um, especially on takeout menus, you could you could definitely do that. Okay, so Pablo, the way I got the diamond, what I did with the diamond border was I um, I went to my master. I'm going to be including the diamond border on all of my pages, so I put it on my master, so I didn't have to place it four times. So now my diamond border is on my on my master page. Okay. Does that help, Paolo? So we're only doing page one for this assignment, as far as I know. Um, let me, I mean, let me double check. Yeah, I think you're just doing the cover design. Next week is the inside pages. Okay. So now that I have my diamond border, I'm gonna to return to my layers panel. Where's my layers? Whoops, you know what? I didn't place these properly. So I'm gonna go back. Go to my color. Paste. I'm gonna click on border. This is going to be my images. Okay, so now everything's put where it should be. Perfect. Uh, well, whoops, this one needs to be on my border. There we go. No, no panic here. Um, just make sure. Just make sure your cover looks really nice and clean. All right, so now here's the fun part. You can choose a fun, legible font for your menu. Unless you're designing a menu for a very formal restaurant, menu cards tend to be on the informal and fun side. So after all, the aim is to present dishes in a very enticing, exciting way. Um, to the diner, to the customers. So you can have fun with the color and the fonts. Just try to not do something too crazy, something that you could look at for more than five minutes without your eyes starting to hurt. But try sticking to this guide rule. Choose a maximum of three fonts for the text. One can be fun and quirky um, or for the, for the menu title. And then one, a very legible typeface, which suits the subheadings. And a third, which is maybe a simple 
easy to read typeface for listing the dishes and the prices. I would choose a sans serif font. That's usually a very good pick. How do you do, how do, you do what without text? Yeah, you'll be setting up par paragraph styles absolutely throughout this whole thing. Um, you can even do it with the cover. Um, for this week, sure. I mean, if you're using a font that you're going to be using for your subheads, absolutely. Um, I think it does ask for you to set up paragraph styles. Even if you don't plan on using them, go ahead and get them set up. I mean, using them this week, but go ahead and get them set up. So for this menu design, um, I had you download those two, those two fonts, right? So back in InDesign, on this page one of the document, um, on typography, or type text here, I want you to grab the type tool. We're gonna click and drag to create a text frame in the center of the page. So um, I've got my logo here. I'm probably gonna make my logo a little smaller. For now, I might change it. And I'm gonna grab my, my type tool. I'm gonna open up my glyphs. My glyphs are already set up here, but to access them, you go to type, glyphs, make sure that's check marked. And then for the font, I wanna make sure, um, now set your cursor into the frame, like it's blinking here, and set the font to adhesive, the font I just sent you, NR7. And by doing that, it gives me a whole selection of, um, of banners to choose from. So pick a banner that would work for you. Let me see, I might do, need something very simple, this one here. And then I'm gonna set the font size to about 350. Let's see, that's pretty big. Maybe not 350, maybe 250. There we go. And I'm gonna set this color to white. Oops. I'm gonna treat this just like just like text, okay? So is everyone did everyone see what I did? I double clicked on one of the banner glyphs to get a banner. And I set the font color to paper or to white. And I'm going to move all this down until I get reach about the center of the page. Okay. Is everyone with me? All right. I might grab this border. Um, you could choose to make the border white. I don't know if that adds or takes away. Maybe we'll do white so it's not so dark. Okay, so now to create the second te uh, text frame, we're gonna take the type tool again. All right, and type in, I'm gonna click, oops. What you can do is once you've done your banner, Go to type, create outlines, and it now treats it as a vector. It will now treat it as, a, uh, as an image. Do you see that? So now I'm gonna grab my type tool, and type over it. Uh, let's do. You pick a font that would actually work. Now I'm kind of analyzing the font that's already in this logo. It looks like they have a serif font that looks like Times New Roman. They have, um, looks like Times New Roman and maybe an Arial font. So, and then this cursive font looks really fun. So I probably want to find something that 
straddles that line. Uh, let's see. I can find a good font. That would be fun. I know when it comes to menu design, you guys might be uh, tempted to go fancy. Uh, let's not do too fancy because sometimes they're hard to read. And please do not use monotype cursiva. Do not use that font. I, that font is so overly used and it's so outdated. <laughs> so avoid it like the plague. Uh, that's a good question, Pablo. The logo, um, it doesn't have to. The, the thing with a menu is it's not like it's a, it's not like it's a, an ad. I guess it is in a way, but as long as you have the logo on the front or maybe a small one on the back page, if it's on the front, it's all that matters. The inside pages, you kind of don't want to take up too much space putting the logo four times. Um, you, you probably want, I mean, it wouldn't be bad if it was on there. It's, it's a yes and no question. I would say use your judgment. If you're going to have it big on the front, you probably don't need it on the inside pages. If you are going to put it on the inside pages, make it very tiny um, for branding purposes. Yeah, so just be very careful with the font that you choose. Um, let's see here. I'm going to do a fun font. This Bon Appetit one looks kind of fun. Oh, that's too fancy. I'm do that one. I'm going to go Arial on this one again. I think. Okay, and then I'm going to give it black. Let's see, why are you not showing up? Oh, I know why. With layers, if you ever can't see a layer that doesn't show up, it's because it's not, you need to move it so it can be seen. Let's bring it to the front. Let's see, why is it not working? That's a good question, Pablo. I think paragraph styles is only pertaining to, to text. So if it's a type, if it's a fancy type, I think you could copy it. If it's if it's not like uh, wingdings or dingbats or something like that that has icons, I'm sure you could apply it. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm gonna try this again. For some reason, it's giving me trouble. Okay, let's go white. Sorry, for some reason it's, maybe I don't want to copy or create outlines. Where would you go? You are. Okay, let's see here. If it's gonna let me do that, I'm not sure why it's being weird. I wonder if it's, oh, because it's on a different layer. That's what, yeah. There we go. Just make sure the type is on the same layer. That's what was wrong. Okay, we're back in business. And now I'm gonna create this same background color. Now, um, again, you could just choose the font that, that would work best for you. I don't know if I'm sold on Arial, but we don't have time to really go through the font family. So um, just take some time and find what would work for you. 
But now that I've placed this banner, and I'm trying to mimic the banner that's already in the logo. So I guess I could go with a whole new banner if I wanted. Um, they have some fun wavy ones. Let's try this. I don't know if I like that one. I'll stick with the one I've got. I'm going to kind of position it behind the logo a little bit. Just like this. So um, Sonia said, do we need to bring front to front and send the banner to the back? Yes, just enough so that you can, um, you don't have to send it all the way to the back. Oh, you right click to do that, click arrange, and then you either send backward or bring to front. That way you can, that allows you to control the layers. Make sure your type, your text boxes are on the, on the um, same layer though. So uh, for instance, I clicked on this. I'm gonna go to my okay. Okay, so for the inside, yeah, we're we're getting there. Sorry, it's just taking me forever. So the the next one you're gonna want is uh, grab your type tool. I'm gonna just blow through this real fast since class is going to an end. This is where you would type in your text. And I'm going to make this all uppercase. I'm going to align my text. And I'm going to increase the font size. Not that big for sure. All right, so probably right about there. I'm going to use. Now I want to introduce a small text frame. Um, so this is going to be my small text. I want to probably do around 16 font, maybe a little bigger. So make sure that your um, your font is set to let's see. Um, Yeah, we'll use the Davies font for just a minute, uh, in just a minute to inc uh, include an icon that I want to use. I'm going to now pick, uh, a t let's see, should I use this font? I'll keep this one. I'm going to click on white so we can see it up against the background. And I'm going to bold some of these words. Like this. All right. And I might make this maybe a different color, just slightly. I'm going to copy the, just so it stands out a little bit, I'm going to copy the yellow in, in this chef's hands. And this is where you could set up your, your paragraph styles. If you wanted to, you're going to use the same format. So I'm going to kind of center this a little bit. All right, now here's where you use the other font. You grab your type tool, draw another type bo uh, text box with your cursor blinking. Go to your glyphs and type in Davies. 
and it should have all these really cool figures. I'm looking for the one with the hands. Let's see if I can find it. There we go. This one. So you want to position the text frame to the left on the top of the line or on to the right and then to the left. This is just adding a little image. Oops. Grab the white. And then you'll you'll do that same thing, grab the other direction. Like that. Okay, so it just adds a little bit of professionalism to design. Oops. I'm gonna save it yet. So the second font that I sent Simon, I just used. It's called Davies. And I just used it. It's another glyphs image that I'm going to use. So, um, so Davies is just a way to use these little glyphs. I'm just adding a glyph at the end of this paragraph. So this is Davies. The other font that I sent you was, um, was for the banner. Okay. So now that you've finished the front of your menu card, this is all that really goes into it. Um, I'm gonna probably just keep this all white because I don't really like the separate color. I could probably add a little divider. I'll probably bring that up. I don't really like it on its own. And then, um, yeah, I'll just position these like so. Make sure there's even amount of space on each side. And there you go. So there's my cover. Um, I guess you could include some, uh, some text information if you wanted here at the bottom. That might be something that you'd put on a master uh, to answer Simon's question. If you wanted your text, uh, your, your address, this is where you could put it. Etc., and then here on this side, include your phone number. Okay, and then just format it. I like to do it super small. Oops. Like this, and then maybe give it like a really light color, like a light gray. There you go. So if you really wanted it to show up, you could do it that way. So it would be on these pages. And that's optional. I don't think that, it's just personal preference, whatever you wanna do. Uh, no, Simon, you can make this look however you want. The thing with the, the, the hard part, of, the good and the hard part about this week four assignment is that, or week three assignment, is that you can make it look however you want. This is, you have creative liberty. Um, the only thing that I want to see that I'll be checking for is use of master pages, paragraph styles, and consistency, and hierarchy within your menu. So you don't have to copy, I mean, you can if you want. If you want to take this example and run with it and play off of it, go for it. If you want to create your own, that's fine too. You're not given a template for this. Yeah, so get creative, have some fun. This is actually your first opportunity where you don't have to copy someone else's work. You can be a designer. So have fun with it. But I'm trying to show you how to, how basic it, it can be. It doesn't have to be fancy or um, you don't have to do a whole lot to it. Okay, I think that concludes class for today. Are there any other questions? You're welcome, sorry for the slow go. Um, 
I'm glad we got through the, I'm glad we troubleshooted a little bit though and worked out the bugs. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and stop the share here. Uh, if there's any questions, please feel free to ask. If not, you're welcome to go and have a great week. We'll see you tomorrow. Bring your work tomorrow and I'd be happy to look at it for you. Thanks, Simon, have a great day. Uh, yeah, Kat, I can go over a few things with you. I um, probably have about maybe 10 minutes and then you can bring your work tomorrow. We can finish from there. Would that work? Okay. Sure. Okay, what were your questions, Kat? Thanks, Sonia. Get some rest. Thanks for sticking with us. Okay, so Pablo, you still have difficulty submitting images that have no URL. Uh, is this for the discussion, Pablo? Okay, so let's pull up. Um, hang on. Let me pull up the 